Hi, I'm Thomas and this is day 37 of 100 days of code in IoT challenge. Today we're going to have another coding session, but this time it's going to be uh, way shorter than the previous ones, no worries. I'm going to show you how to implement a simple logging on ESP8266. So you have a nice abstraction for the serial monitor and I'm going to do it with the use of C slash C++ macros. Let me show you how to do this and let's get started. Okay, for our logging functionality, I'm going to start from my Visual Studio Code opened and I'm going to go to terminal. And uh, this is a new thing, right? I'm not doing a new projects anymore because I've got, um, I'm just switching to um, directory with all my platform IO projects and here I'm just gonna run git clone on my uh, repository with a template for ESP266 projects with platform IO and Google test as a unit testing framework, right? You probably remember from the futures video, um, that's why I'm um, here in my command line that this is still remembered as futures, but I'm going to change that to logging. Um, again, I'm creating this as a new project and later on I will move this to a one a library folder, right? For the union. But for now, let's just um, have everything separated and clear. So I have cloned this. Um, you obviously can find that command in the description of the video as well as the link to the repository itself. In the repository there is a readme file um, you can read and there, there are all the information to um, start using it. Okay, so yeah, so I've got that um, already cloned. It's on my computer and I can open it with Visual Studio Code uh, now. So I'm gonna open that directory, which is in documents, platform IO, projects, and logging. Right, so opening it, and there we go. There we go. That opens platform IO.ini. For those who doesn't know, um, this template project has all the information required for running the tests in the native environment, which is on this computer, right? Which is running them locally. So you don't need to upload a code to um, the microcontroller, right? For the native tests, right? These are the specific tests. Um, you can also have the tests that you upload to the device and just run there, right? So you have two options, right? But anyway, Let's start working with this log on this logging library, more like a macros, right? It's, it's going to be a set of macro functions to, um, to use whatever you want, right, in the code. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to start from the desktop. Um, not really set up CPP, we just do something like um, creating a new test file. So logging underscore test dot cpp and what is required I need to copy paste the include header for the g test and apart from that I need to specify a test macro so that's gonna be logging and test logging works right unfortunately with the test I don't really know if there is a way to really test uh, if something is displayed in the serial monitor or in the output. So um, this test is mainly going to be used um, to test it manually, right? So I'm just going to run it and then ver verify myself with the output from the console. And uh, yeah, the reason is, is you know, I'm going to build a macro, a very low level thing. And uh, yeah, again, I don't know how to if it's even possible to have like a proper uh, test driven uh, development approach or even, you know, writing unit tests after the, the code. Um, and also, you know, this is something we can easily verify. We can easily verify uh, just, you know, by looking at the output, right? So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bother now, but um, if you would like, you can do it yourself, right? So yeah. So I'm just gonna focus, you know, on the uh, visible outcome um, as soon as I write the code uh, and uh, verify it myself, 
Right, so we got uh, this test logging that's just gonna be mainly to run uh, the, the macro and check if, it, if it's working. Okay, but yeah, speaking about this macro, there is nothing at the moment. So let's create it, right? So let's create it. Uh, file main.cpp is not needed here. Instead, I'm gonna create something like a, a logging.h. And that logging uh, header is, is just gonna be, you know, the place where we have all the, all the macros, right? Right, okay. And that's uh, what I need to do first is to check if we have um, logging h so you know the 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 header stuff done so this is not included twice and we need end if i think at, at the end right right cool okay here before i start writing any code what we need to think about is to uh how that library, how those macros are gonna look like, right? So I would expect something like that. So let's say I have a piece of functionality doing something, I don't know, connecting to Wi-Fi, sending a request or uploading a file. And uh, so I have like blocks of code here, another block of code here. And at some point, I would like to log some information. For example, if the request has been successful, right? So what uh, sort of um, response uh, status code we, we received. So that's, that, that could be something I, I, I could log. And for that, I'm thinking about the simplest, simplest macro function. And the simplest macro function would be, for example, so for like, you know, receiving this, this request, I'm thinking about um, the case where, let's say there is an if somewhere, right? There is like a in if, let me just, you know, write some example code, but comment it out. So if, let's say a status code somewhere equals for, is different than 200, maybe something like that, at this point, you know, we could actually even do that. So I will define the status code to something else, right? Like 400. And then somewhere in the code, there is like, if status code is different than 200, we would like to log some information. And that information um, that, you know, the fact that the status code is different than 200, make this an issue, right? So this is not like some request we don't really care about, but we really care about. This for us is uh, like a serious error. So for that, right? And we want this to be locked as well. So for that, I'm thinking more about something like error F, where I say invalid status code, and then I will do something like that. Okay, so the macro function name indicates what is the error level. The F here means that this is like a print F, right? So we, we, we use this, uh, this approach where we uh, swap the, the actual variables with these flags, like percent %d. Okay, there could be also something like just error, just, you know, just error without F and that would just, you know, print out the error to the serial monitor. And, you know, this this would uh, would print out the invalid status code 400 to the serial monitor as well, okay? And that would be for the error, right? For the error level. So levels are the keyword here, right? When you log information, you want to um, have a logging levels, right? And these levels tell what is really the um, what is the importance of the of that log information? Okay, how important it is. Okay, and what what are these error levels? Um, yeah, this this can be a, a little bit tricky question because um, you can just you know um, come up with anything, right? You could have like you know debug error warning, right? Um, so uh, the best approach, something I usually do is to check for the standards on the internet. And this is what I've done. 
this is what I've done and uh, there is a standard according to RFC 5424 we can distinguish those right what is RFC 5424 it's the syslog protocol and I'm just going to stick to that standard and define those log levels right by the way this is a, a monologue library I, I used it when I was a PHP developer very long time ago mm, but I really like that standard and I think um, this is this is worth uh, going for um, one thing uh, that we could add is to uh, introduce another level that is called trace and this is for like um, you know this is for like information that is below debug something that you don't really care about but there might be a very specific scenario you need it okay especially when you um when your code spits out a lot of information so i'm gonna introduce a, a trace as well okay so yeah going back to my code again so except for the error f you would have like you know a trace f debug f info f or info just on just info right and then you know warning f and so on right same like here right notice and uh, critical and alert and emergency okay so that that's what we would do and for that you know what um, let's start from defining all of those levels as con constants okay so we will have a debug debug and debug and let's assign them uh, a values right let's assign them values so the same values as here i was thinking about um except for the trace that is not there it's not in that standard and i'm just gonna give it a zero because it's the lowest possible right so we have info notice so it's info which is 200 notice and so on okay let me speed it up okay done so yeah i've got all of those levels defined right i, I have all of those levels defined nice right okay so yeah now the next step um i don't really want to, um, you know, duplicate a lot of code for that. So I'm going to start from a common macro function that can handle all of those levels, right? So something that a macro function that takes uh, two arguments, right? The first argument is going to be the level and the second argument is going to be the actual text. And uh, ah, you know what? We, we need actually an, uh, we need another one. So there's going to be two macro functions so one with two arguments and uh, and one with uh, uh, that's gonna need a variadic right uh, that needs to be variadic so yeah let me show you let me show you what i mean right so that's just gonna be the common common function where we can uh, do the implementation and over that we'll have some abstraction so yeah let, let me let me demonstrate how what what i what do what do i mean by that okay so log right takes a, a level and message and then here that is gonna check for the log level and compare it with level and only if the log level is less or equal than uh, the actual level we're going to print some information right and because i would like to test it on native first we're gonna um, stick to native so here i'm just gonna use a print print f i mean okay so print f that's gonna be print f and uh, s and m s g the simplest thing we can do however however i need the backslashes here i think so here 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 and here as far as i remember probably here as well so yes okay so we've got them 
and that's the the log function macro and you know what um i think we could actually try to test it straight away so i'm gonna go here and uh, uh, remove those the whole block of code and just run log error we obviously need to include logging and there is another requirement you probably realized we need a log level constant it is not defined anywhere because this is gonna be for the developer to define right what is the actual log level so um we probably gonna need some default one but for now i'm just gonna define it here so define log level and we say this is a debug maybe right so we have a debug level and let's see if this code works oh okay yeah there is something missing in here too few arguments and this is my fault right i am supposed to pass a log level that also probably needs a prefix so let me add it in a second okay so you see the error is printed out okay it is printed out however i don't think this is enough information right it's not just the message that you would like to print i'm also thinking about printing something like let me show you so i'm thinking about printing the actual uh, level name but because these are values at the moment and um yeah i think this is this needs something like log level trace prefix everywhere so let me add that as well great and and now um and now yes we're gonna need some sort of the function right we need a function that um, takes these values right and turn them into a text right into a string so let me just quickly speed it up and uh, i implement it Okay, so we've got the level name, get level name function, and here let's just print this out. So I'm going to pass a level to get level name. That probably also needs to have that notation. Okay. And uh, we basically would like that, uh, I mean, you know, I would like, I'm thinking it would be a good idea to um, have this in the square brackets, right? So the actual level name would be in the square brackets and we would have, and we would have like a colon and after colon, it's going to be this one and uh, there's going to be new line after everything, right? So that is for the message. Okay, let's run this and see if this is working. Uh, no, it's not working. And the reason is, uh, use, okay, so that's just undeclared and the file. Uh, this is a, a wrong, wrong constant name. Okay, so let's try again. Let's try again. And um, there is a use of undeclared. Okay, yeah, that's just the same thing in here right so running it again and now we've got a nice information right so we've got debug and error so that's our log message nicely in debug okay yeah but again that's not everything just the error level for me this is not enough enough right i would like to get some extra information what else we can add is uh, a file name from where this log, uh, where this log has been actually, you know, locked, where the information has been locked, and we can get the line name with the special constants, 
and for that we could do something like let me show you so you have printf and uh, um, maybe in this sort of format where we have another square bracket and the s is gonna be the file name and d is gonna be the line number and we'll have something like that so that is not required um, right that is something that we need here uh, maybe not that one though cool not that backslash and uh, um, for those we can use the file underscore double underscore file double underscore and for the line is line double underscore uh, double underscore line double underscore okay and let's see what we get if I do that okay nice right so I've got I've got now debug test test desktop login test cpp line six and the uh, error from here right so that looks that looks even better now um, there is more things there is more information we could add to this log like time but um, I don't want this video to be too long so I'm not really gonna focus on time today um, and also you know like there is this uh, synchronization element that we would have to do and because the this this is about to be refactored with the new futures implementation um, this is another reason to not do it for now okay so let's just keep it like that and uh, add the print f because I think this is enough for the for just for just uh, uh, lock I mean you know just, just have a lock f like a print f right so let me show you how to do that so I'm just gonna copy paste entire thing and change the log to log f and here apart from the level and msg right um, which we could essentially rename to something else because this is not really a message anymore this is like a template so I'm gonna use just f underscore and use the three dots as for the variadic arguments right and here we still gonna get level we still gonna get the file and line however for the printf what we want to take is the f right and here the va args I think this is how it's done and there is one more line I need to introduce and that's just going to be a new line okay so that would be log f that would be log f let's see if it compiles okay so that compiles and now let me add log f with the debug and we will have something like an error and person d and i'm gonna pass something like 200 maybe and let's see what we get okay nice right so we got error and 200 so yeah so the other the other uh, implementation um the, the, you know the base function the base macro function implementation works well okay with the print uh, print f nice okay okay right so those two as i said these are just just the base functions and now i'm going to implement the actual ones uh, as i showed you at the beginning right so things like you know debug debug f info info f notice notice f so i'm going to show you how to do two first of them and then i will just speed everything up and and uh do it quickly here so yeah so yeah um one one thing that we need to have a look at though is again the log level right because really the log level can um tell us if it's even worth to implement some function like you know to 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 have a body for some functionality and what do I, what do i mean by that so let's say the developer sets the log level to error right so everything above the error which is like either error critical alert or emergency is going to get locked 
but all the others, right, anything below is not gonna be locked, right? So for these cases, there's not even a point to have any implementation, okay? And this can be done with the macros, with the if statement. So let's say for the first level, which is the trace, we have like log level trace as far as I remember, yes. So if something is less or equal to log level trace, then we want to have implementation, okay? So for that, we will have a trace that takes message, okay? And inside, we're just gonna run log log level trace so that's the first argument we not we don't have to worry about that anymore right if we use this helper function and the second argument we're just gonna pass through msg and else we will define trace still but that trace won't have any body. So it's just gonna stay like that, right? However, one missing thing is um, the trace F, right? We have a trace covert, but we would like to have a trace F. So I'm just going to add it here in the same way. So we will have, we will do it with the VA arcs right uh, I think I need to pass yeah that is wrong there needs to be something like that oh no is it not yeah probably this is enough um, and here we need to define empty trace f okay let's quickly test it because i'm not sure if this is gonna work so uh first of all i'm going to change that to trace and now instead of uh, this instead of using log f i'm just gonna use trace f yeah which is probably not existing here because of some issues with the formatting yeah, it doesn't really see it. Let me just fix it quickly. So that, you, that should be fixed now. Let's have a look. Oh, okay, there is still something wrong. Oh, and that is here. That should be log f now. So there we go, right? There we go. And we have trace information now with error 200. And let me show you what happens if I change the default log level. So let's set it to, for example, error. So now with log level set to error, we won't get any information. We should not get any information and this is correct, right? We don't get any information. So as I said, depending on the level that you set, you get a message or not. And in that case, with log level error, it is not possible to see any trace, but if I do error, and I will say like uh, anything or something that is even higher than error. So alert maybe, alert, some alert. I should get this information printed out, but at the moment I won't, I don't have the implementation yet but um, I, I hope you understand the idea, right? I, you understand the idea. So I have this additional macro functions for every single level, and that really runs a log or log f with that level, okay? So, at the, so, so right now, I'm going to speed up the video again and uh, add uh, all the remaining level, all the remaining levels. They're gonna look almost the same as this one. The only difference is gonna be the name, right? So I will have, um, 
you know, trace, debug, uh, warning, notice, and so on. And also, when calling this uh, log, it's gonna be called with the, uh, you know, with the appropriate level, right? So for debug, it's gonna be debug, for warning, warning. Okay, so let me speed it up now and quickly do it. Okay, done. Right, so yeah, there was lots of work to define all of them, but you know, as you can see, this is very useful to have the log and log f because um, all the common implementation, right? All the, all the, uh, you know, sending the, the, the actual log to uh, an output happens here, right? So you don't need to copy yourself, right? Except for all of this. Uh, macros that I defined. Okay, so yeah, let's see if it works. If I didn't make any any mistake, uh, I didn't, right? I didn't. So as you can see, this information, right? There is no trace because the log level is error now. We just get error and and uh, alert, some alert. If I change the level to trace, I should get something like like that, right? So I have trace as well. Okay, so that all depends on the log level. And uh, for the for the default log level, right, uh, that's something to check because if I don't define any log level, I think the compiler is gonna fail, right? Because there is no log, there is no log level. So it would be nice to have some uh, default log level, right? That can be even trace or debug maybe. So let's try to do something like that. So if not defined, if not defined log level, let's define the debug as a default one. And let's see if we can, uh, if we can over, over, uh, overwrite it, right? Because yeah, now we have a debug one. If I don't have anything, if I have, if I don't have anything defined in here, in my test file, there is oh yeah i see okay so yeah uh this is this is the problem right i need to remove that so when i have now when i have this removed i should just get no warnings and an error and alert right but what if i want to overwrite this probably that needs to be here defined before the include so now i'm gonna define trace so we should get a trace information not just error and alert and let's see if this actually works. Yeah, so that works. You see, we got trace. So we can have a default one, but um, you know, the developer has to remember that the log level should be the first thing to define here at the top of the file, right? So that's probably gonna go at the top of the main file, right? Cool, okay. So that's all good. It works on my machine, right? But um, that probably is not going to work on ESP8266 because on the embedded environment, we need a serial monitor. The serial monitor is, is the, um, you know, is the class that communicates, right, with the outside world that sends the log information, right? And this is just based on the printf. Cool, so, um, so in that case, let me define quickly, let me define an alter, alternative implementation, and that's gonna be something that we also test but we test it in the embedded environment, right? So I'm gonna connect my ESP266 to USB and that goes to my computer and we'll have another test, but in the embedded folder and let's maybe call it a logging test as well. That should be fine. And that logging test, test in embedded env, right? So that's gonna be the difference, but all the rest is, is should be the same, okay? And uh, if I try to run it like that, let's see what happens, right? So I'm just gonna do PIO test, and that should build the code for me, upload it to the board, and we should get the output here in the serial monitor. And I'm pretty sure we won't get anything but not 100% sure. You can never know 
how um, this device is going to behave. Okay, so the test uh, run and we actually can see something, right? We can see something, but it's not really the format we would like to get. We have something like anything, some alert, and then we've got the trace and all of this, right? This is probably due to the serial monitor uh, not being used, but just the standard print F that might actually use the, the, the serial monitor in the Arduino H. But you know what? We don't want to have the formats like that, right? We don't want to uh, have the logs formatted in this way. And let's change it. And we can change it just by going to logging.h and having an alternative implementation for the Arduino environment. How can we do this? That is pretty straightforward. We can use the constant Arduino. So we'll have if on Arduino, and if it's not Arduino, this is what we're going to define, right? And that's going to be just and if. So this is defined for the for no Arduino environment, for native environment, and this will be defined for the Arduino environment. And for those, I've got the code prepared. I've got the code prepared already. So let me paste it in. So that's how it looks like. It is, um, you know, pretty similar to what we've got, uh, we, what we've got there. But now it's with serial monitor and there is also this uh, magic letter F. And let me explain what the F does. But before I do that, let me just make sure everything is um, in place. Okay, yeah, it is not in place because of the format of get level name. So that needs to be changed. And I think apart from that, this is all good. Yeah, that seems like it's all good. Yes, okay. Right. Um, so yeah, so yeah, let me explain what this F, what the F means and what is a PSTR. Um, so yeah, these, these indicate that the string that we're trying to print out is kept uh, in the program memory. It's this functionality, if you look at the Arduino reference in the documentation, it is explained here, right? So that um, is really helpful if you don't want to take too much RAM memory, right? If you want to save memory, it is a very good practice to use the uh, programm, so program memory instead, and uh, for that, there is this uh, helper function set, really set of helper functions. It's not just um, it's not just one, right? As you can see here, for example, we have f and PSTR, and simply, you know, f is used with the print, with the serial print, and PSTR that was required uh, on the template for the print f p. And what is print f underscore p? That's a specific method on serial to print out things stored in the program memory. So that's what you need to know, right? So I'm just trying to save memory here with this implementation, right? And this is very similar in here, right? That still does the same thing that happens in here, prints out the information in exactly the same format, but because we did this Arduino environment, right? Embedded environment for Node MCU v2, um, has, you know, a, a scarce memory, scarce ma uh, RAM memory, we're trying to be a little bit more efficient, okay? So yeah, um, so yeah, this is one thing, and there is another thing that we could improve, and that is this get level name, right? So the get level name method, uh, sorry, function, this can also have a different body, different implementation, depending on the environment. So in, in the native environment, we can just keep it like that. But for Arduino environment, that is going to also be efficient with the memory. So uh, we're going to store all of this string literals in the prog mem, right? In the program memory. And for that, what needs to be done is to the use of the f function, macro function again. 
but because we use that macro function, the type is now different. It's not const char anymore. It is const flash string helper. Okay. So that's how this looks like right now, right? So we have a different implementation for the get level name depending on the environment. So in Arduino, we use the flash string helper to store all of these string literals in the flash memory, in the program memory. And also when we print out the information, we also uh, keep all of those literals here in the flash memory, right? For the native environment though, we've got get level name, just, you know, returning the const char. And here we're just using printf, right? You could ask why, why do we even need a native environment code? And I can answer you, the reason is I am going to run tests in the native uh, environment, right? So if, if I have a code that uses these macros, right? I would like to be able to run those in the native uh, in the native environment and then I would like to get the log information, right? Because, you know, there might be some issues that I would like to debug and I would like to get the log information. Okay, so that is the reason. Right, okay, so let me try to run this in the native environment first to see if I didn't break anything. Okay, I didn't break anything. And uh, let's do, let's do both now, right? So let's run also on the in the embedded environment and there is an issue and that issue is due to let me see um, I think the issue here is not having Arduino dot H and that is wrong sorry because that should be uh, in here, right? A little confusion, sorry, that was the native file, okay? So this is native in native env and this is embedded environment, right? So let's run it. Okay, so yeah, native tests, fine. And now it's building, it's going to upload the code to the, uh, to the board and we will see the output that should be correct now, right? Okay, there we go, there we go. And yeah, that's what we got. So we've got a trace, error and alert. As you can see, there is a problem with formatting. And uh, this is due to the test runner. Um, it is not fully compatible, unfortunately, with platform IO. You probably remember the issue from here. Right, and the workaround that I have to do. So this is probably due to, this is probably um, due to that uh, compatibility issue. That's why we get trace in here straight away instead of having, you know, the uh, the space, uh, sorry, the new line after, and uh, just to just to double check and be on the safe side, um, you know, double check if it's not the fault of the of the logging macros. For the embedded environment, I'm just going to use a serial monitor myself with the print line. Let's say like, um, hello, it's it's first line, right? So let's see what happens what happens, right? If that is gonna get printed out the line after this bit, that means something wrong is with the with the uh, with the logging, right? With the logging header, but I don't think it is. So yeah, let me just let me just double check and uh, if it's fine, then uh, I'm, I'm just gonna consider this whole thing done. Okay, so the test run, and you see, hello is the first line was uh, in the same line as the output from the test runner. So that's the, the compatibility issue. And this is what we got, okay? 
Cool. Okay. So the last step in a speed speed up mode, I'm just gonna add all of this. Um, you know, try all of these macros and uh, see if they all work. So yeah, let me do it. Okay, so um, yeah, I've got, I've done everything and uh, tested it uh, on, on, on both environments and as you can see, it all works well. Cool, okay, so the, uh, I consider this done. Um, I might add some extra functionality for the time and uh, uh, sending the logs, uh, maybe for sending the logs there will be the actual video to show you how to do it but for the time I might do it myself. Cool, okay, yeah, so so yeah, so we have the logging ready and now I can move it to the common uh, place which is the UniUno uh, library, the meant to be IoT framework. And this is it for today, thanks for watching. If you find this content useful and you would like to stay up to date with my channel, don't forget to subscribe, the button is somewhere there just click on it. Cheers, bye.